How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another God of War Ragnarok video. Now for today's video, I figured I would do a lot of combat tips and tricks that a lot of you probably aren't aware of or maybe you overlooked because if you're anything like me, there's a lot of early game abilities that I just completely forgot that I could even do towards the end of the game. So hopefully after watching this video, you'll either learn something new or it just acts as a refresher course and reminds you that there are some different abilities that you can pull off in this game that you might have forgot about. All right, so the first tip that I have for everybody has to do with the practice area on Nilfheim. Once you get far enough in the story, which isn't too far, you will unlock the ability to travel to Nilfheim, and at Nilfheim they have a practice arena. Now in this practice arena, your abilities will recharge faster and you cannot die, so you can just take unlimited amounts of damage and you have no penalty, you can just sit here and practice your different combo moves, practice against different types of enemies. But the main reason that we're going here today is because this is where you can level up your skills. When you take a look at the skill tree, there are different levels to each of the skills, and the only way to level up these skills is by using these abilities. Now you can either just play the game as normal and level these up over time, but I have beaten the entire game and there are still some skills that I have yet to level up, so this is the best way to do it. Now you don't get any character XP for doing this and you don't get any hack silver for doing this, but this is the best way that you can level up all your individual skills. Just come into this mode and spam literally any ability that you want over and over and over and you will level them up to the max level in no time. So the next tip I have has to do with blocking and parrying. Now if you're anything like me, you might struggle a little bit when it comes to the timing of parrying. And I struggled for the longest time until I practiced it enough. And what I learned is that the best way to parry in this game is as soon as you see the little yellow circle pop up, as soon as that circle is about to disappear, hold in the L1 button. Now for the longest time, I was trying to tap the L1 and just time it perfectly, and you don't have to do that in this game. And for the enemies that are attacking that don't have the yellow circle pop up, you can do it the same way. You have to wait until the last possible second and then just push and hold in L1. And then either it will parry automatically for you, and if for some reason the parry doesn't work because your timing is off, if you're holding in the L1 button, it will just block the incoming attack instead. So when I was tapping the L1 button, I would constantly mess up the timing, and I would always just miss, and I would just take the hit directly to the face. But if you press and hold in the L1 button, it will still parry attacks for you as long as you time it right. So for those of you that are struggling with how to parry, just tap and hold instead of just tapping. Trust me, it'll make the world of difference. And then another tip I have when it comes to blocking slash parrying is that if you use the stonewall shield, you can actually block these yellow attacks that normally you would have to parry with any other shield. Now if you use any other shield and you try to do this, it will knock you off balance and then the enemy can hit you with a follow-up attack. But if you use the stonewall shield, you will be able to tank almost 90% of the yellow circle attacks. So if you're the type of player that doesn't like to do any parrying at all, definitely go with the stonewall shield because you can just sit back and tank everything. Now the next tip has to do with the poison element. If you have any sort of attachments or gear or anything that can do poison damage, if you are able to inflict poison on your enemies, it will make your enemies level go down. So if you're facing an enemy and he's like a level or two above you, if you inflict him with poison damage, their level will go down a tier. And then once the enemies are taken down a level, they will take more damage and they won't do as much damage to you. So if you're ever in a situation where the enemy are just way higher level than you, you can knock them down a few pegs if you use poison damage. So definitely keep an eye out for any sort of attachments or armor that lets you do poison. So the next tip I have has to do with the Frost Awaken ability for the Axe and the Flame Whiplash ability for the Blades of Chaos. Now these are one of the first perks that you can unlock in the entire game, and to use these you have to hold in the triangle button for the axe, or it says to mash the triangle button for the blades. Now very early on I was making the mistake of trying to hold in the triangle button for both weapons, but you don't have to do that. When it comes to the blades of chaos you can tap the triangle button and that speeds it up even faster. So if you're using the blades of chaos be sure to tap the triangle button repeatedly to speed up the process, but then if you're using the axe that is when you have to hold in the triangle button. So the next tip I have has to do with weak points for certain enemy types. Now if you didn't know, most enemies do have a weakness that you can exploit. For example, for the Light Elves, if you throw your axe at their face, you will knock off their mask and it will stun them. So that is a great way to take out the Light Elves. And then when it comes to most of the regular creatures like the Draugr or any type of soldier or anybody that can walk on two legs, just aim for their legs, sweep their legs out from underneath of them, opening them up for tons of damage. 
so be sure to always aim for the legs. And then when it comes to these little wisp creatures that are always flying around that you have to shoot arrows at, if you didn't know, you can actually aim where you hit these things, and they will fly into other enemies and explode for a crazy amount of damage. So anytime you see these little wisps, just stun them with the arrows and then line yourself up with the other enemies and knock them into them for a big explosion. And then the next tip I have is a really quick one, and it has to do with enemies that are either shooting or throwing projectiles at you. Now projectiles aren't going to have a little parry indicator, but you can in fact parry projectiles. So anytime an enemy is throwing fire at you or spitting poison or shooting bifrost or arrows or any kind of projectile, if you time it just perfectly, right before the projectile hits you, you can hit the parry button at the last possible second and send the projectile flying back at your enemy doing tons of damage. So definitely keep an eye out anytime there's enemies that shoot projectiles. And then the next tip I have is to remember to always go to the blacksmith and buy yourself some resurrection stones. I couldn't tell you how many times I went into a boss encounter or a very important point into the story and I would die and have to reload the checkpoint and I completely forgot about buying the resurrection stones. There's three different versions of the stones you can buy. You can buy a cheaper version that restores a moderate amount of health. You can buy the expensive version that will restore your health fully. Or you can buy the berserker stone that will bring you back to life with your full rage meter. So all three stones are good options to have. It's a great way to save yourself. If you're in the middle of a boss fight and you die, you could just come back to life and get a second chance. And it's just a good habit to always remember to go and buy these any chance you get. And then the final tip I have for you guys is a little bit of a spoiler. So if you don't want to be spoiled about a certain weapon, then turn away now. Alright, so the final tip I have has to do with the spear, and once you level a spear up high enough, you will unlock the Elemental Siphon ability. Now, this is an ability that I unlocked and I just completely forgot about and I was never really using it, but this ability is really, really good. Now what it does is you hold in R2 and you will siphon an enemy's element into the spear, turning your spear into a really buffed up version of whatever element your enemy is. So if you use it on a Draugr, it's going to turn your spear into a fire spear. If you use it on like one of those lizards, it's going to turn your spear into a poison spear. And then if you throw the spear and detonate it, it will explode with whatever element that you siphoned. So if you throw a poison spear, it's going to explode and do a ton of poison damage. And like I said earlier, the poison damage is going to build up on the enemies and lower their levels. So poison is really effective. If you use this ability on the Asgardian soldiers, you can siphon Bifrost from them. And just overall, this is a really great ability. Definitely unlock it as soon as possible because it's really, really good. Now that is going to do it for all the combat tips I have for you guys in this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then please give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit the subscribe button. Be sure to follow me on Twitch at Games Live and join the channel's Discord. And that is going to do it for me, everyone. And I will talk to you all in the next video.